the Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Recep Tayyip Erdogan, President of the Republic of Turkey. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Recep Tayyip Erdogan, President of the Republic of Turkey, and to invite him to address the Assembly. Distinguished President, distinguished heads of states and governments, distinguished Secretary General, valuable delegates, I would like to salute you all with my most heartfelt emotions on behalf of myself and on behalf of the Turkish nation. I would like to congratulate Mr. Kurosi, who successfully completed his term as President of the 77th General Assembly of the United Nations, and wish all the success to Mr. Francis, who is taking over his duty. I hope that the 78th General Assembly, convened with a team of trust and solidarity, will be a blessing for the entire human race. Unfortunately, it's not possible to draw a more optimistic picture of the future of our world compared to the assessments we had carried out over this podium here last year. The picture before us shows that we're facing increasingly complex and dangerous challenges on a global scale. There are conflicts, wars, humanitarian crises, political strife and social tensions to the south, north, east and west of my own country. These growing challenges, compounded by global economic problems, are becoming more and more, to diffi more difficult to deal with. In addition to the humanitarian tragedy, the war on Europe's eastern borders has created serious problems in all areas, from economy to security, from energy to food supply security. Terrorism, which is used as an instrument of proxy wars in Syria, North Africa and the Sahel region, is causing irreparable damage to the increasingly fragile international security climate. The areas of operation of terrorist organizations, which grow by exploiting the ambitions of global powers, are spreading like an epidemic across vast geographies, taking advantage of technological developments and deteriorating socio-economic conditions everywhere. The signs of xenophobia, racism and Islamophobia turning into a new crisis have reached alarming levels in the last one year. No matter which corner of the world we shall live in, climate change and related natural disasters have become a reality in our daily lives and of our daily lives. On the morning of February the 6th, 2023, Turkey faced, in the words of the Secretary General, quote, one of the biggest natural disasters of the century, both in terms of its magnitude and the area it affected. It's impossible for us to forget the sincerity of the international community, including that of the United Nations, in responding urgently to our appeal for help, the help, the self-sacrificing efforts and the generous support provided to our country. The friendship shown to our country on this very dark day, when more than 50,000 people have lost their lives and 850,000 buildings were destroyed and cities sheltering millions of people were virtually leveled to the ground, was an important source of consolation for us. <laughs> we have friends from all across the globe, from a hundred countries, I would like to thank you sincerely for the helping hand you have so generously extended to us. 
our efforts are underway in an uninterrupted fashion in order to reconstruct our destroyed cities and the buildings in there. And a few days ago, Libya, with which we have strong historical ties, was subjected to heavy destruction and significant loss of life caused by storms and floods. Following the disaster, Turkey immediately mobilized to help Libya, where 12,000 people have lost their lives and thousands are still unaccounted for. Within the first phase, we've sent three vessels and three planes, along with 567 personnel, relief personnel, hundreds of vehicles and thousands of tons of food, shelter and sanitary supplies. Our non-governmental organizations are also participating in the relief efforts in that region with their own means and their capabilities. As a country that stands by the side of the victimized and oppressed people, wherever they might be in the world, we haven't and we will not leave our Libyan brothers and sisters alone. And the friendly countries hopefully will be mobilized in order to extend a helping hand uh, to Libya. And I would like to wish an expeditious recovery to our Moroccan brothers and sisters who were hit by a very strong earthquake, just like the one we had recently experienced. Distinguished delegates, we are pleased to see that this year's theme of the General Assembly is in line with Turkey's goals because our vision of the Turkey's century, which we started to realize in the 100th anniversary of our Republic, is the most concrete expression of this overlapping vision. A vision that eliminates global injustices, addressing economic inequalities and producing peace, security, stability and prosperity, effective, inclusive, that embraces humanity. In short, it's a call, it's our call for the establishment of an international system for the benefit of entire humanity. And this vision is finding more and more resonance. We agree with the distinguished Secretary General, Mr. Guterres's recent observation, whereby he stated that the institutions established after the Second World War no longer reflect today's world. This statement expresses our call for the world is bigger than five. The Security Council has ceased to be the guarantor of world security and has become a battleground for the political strategies of only five countries. We consider the recent events taking place in Cyprus as a manifestation of this hollowed out institutional structure that doesn't inspire justice and trust anymore. As a country that has pioneered numerous initiatives to strengthen peace and stability, we attach great importance to Mr. Guterres's call for a new agenda for peace. With this understanding, since the beginning of the Russian-Ukrainian war, we have been endeavoring to keep both our Russian and Ukrainian friends around the table with a thesis that war will have no winners and peace will have no losers. We will step up our efforts to end the war through diplomacy and dialogue on the basis of Ukraine's independence and territorial integrity. With the Black Sea Initiative, which we have launched together with the United Nations, we have prevented the threat of a global hunger crisis by ensuring the delivery of 33 million tons of grain through the Black Sea to the global markets. However, the failure to implement this agreement in all its elements has left the world facing a new crisis. This initiative had been extended three times in part with my efforts. This 
humanitarian bridge that ex- extends to the uh, countries that are in dire need will hopefully benefit from our arrangements and from our negotiations. We have a new plan uh, whereby another one million tons of grain will be released to the countries in dire need around the world. Our aim is to make the greatest possible contribution to the world peace and prosperity in the face of the conflicts around us. The humanitarian tragedy in Syria is now marking its 13th year and it's worsening the living conditions of everyone in the region regardless of their origin and their faith. We are the only country to take a principled, constructive and a fair stance against developments that threaten Syria's political unity, social integrity and economic well-being. It's becoming increasingly important to end the crisis in the South with a comprehensive, lasting and a sustainable solution which meets the legitimate expectations of the people. The devastating impact of the February 6th earthquakes which affected 14 million people in our country was also deeply felt in Syria. Especially in northwestern Syria, the already troubled humanitarian situation has only worsened. It's unfortunate that the United Nations cross-border humanitarian aid operations in the region was interrupted at such a time. As Turkey, we will not leave more than 4 million people struggling to survive in the north of Syria to their fate and demise. As the construction of the settlements we lead beyond our borders are completed, we will continue to encourage the return of the refugees in our country to these statements, to these settlements, excuse me. However, the biggest threat to Syria's territorial integrity and political unity is the support given to terrorist organizations guided by the powers that have designs on this country. The Syrian people are overwhelmed by the PKK-PYD terrorist organizations and the radical groups organized on the basis of sectarian divisions and on the other hand, uh, different groups have reached the point where it is no longer unbearable for the people. As a matter of fact, various consequences of this have started to emerge recently. Iraq, another neighbor, is also making sincere efforts to overcome the internal and external challenges it faces. We act with an understanding that strengthens Iraq's political unity, territorial integrity and reconstruction efforts and we do not discriminate between the constituent elements of the country. As the countries of the region, the path to development will be established so that the regional integration will be ensured. The games of those who cling to the Daesh excuse every time they are in trouble in the region have now been all but exposed. As the leader of a country that has actually fought the biggest battle against Daesh, inflict, inflicted the biggest losses on this organization, and knows the realities in front of and behind the problem, I want to speak very clearly and frankly. We are sick and tired of the hypocrisy of those who use Daesh and similar organizations as a front to their own political and economic interests in the Middle East, North Africa and Sahel, but especially in Syria and Iraq. We're tired. The threat in these regions is not only confined to Daesh. The real threat is the terrorist organizations, paramilitary groups, mercenaries and local elements that are used and that are being nurtured as tools of proxy wars. 
and whoever pays the highest price will use these uh, elements. Despite this reality, countries that continue to work with terrorist organizations for their own political and economic interests have no right to complain about terrorism and its problems as an extension. In such a world, no one is safe, whether they live right next to a conflict zone or far away on the land surrounded by oceans. Nobody, nobody can be safe. That's why we say that under the auspices of the United Nations, we must rapidly restructure the institutions charged with ensuring the security, peace and prosperity of the world. We must build a global governance architecture that is capable of representing all origins, beliefs and cultures in the world with its geography and demographies. In conclusion, we say once again with all of our hearts, the world is bigger than five and a fairer world is possible. Distinguished delegates, I would now like to briefly share with you my country's approach to various problem areas, starting with our own region. The transformation of the Eastern Mediterranean into a sovereign region of peace, prosperity and stability will only be possible if the rights and the law of all parties are respected. We have no eyes on anybody's rights and we do not and will not allow anyone to ignore our rights. This is the 60th anniversary of the emergence of the Cyprus question. The Turkish Cypriot side has always made sincere efforts to find a just, lasting and sustainable solution to the Cyprus issue. It is a widely accepted fact that this solution can no longer be realized on the basis of the Federation model. That's why we invite the international community to recognize the independence of the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus and to establish diplomatic, political and economic ties with this country. We also expect the United Nations peacekeeping force on the island to observe meticulously the impartiality it is obliged to display. We do not want this already discredited, discredited force to face another loss of credibility in Cyprus. And we are making sincere efforts for uh, Yemen. We have strong historical ties with Yemen and we hope and pray that this uh, problem will be settled once and for all through unquestionable respect to the territorial integrity and unity of Yemen. Our relations with Egypt used to be a little stagnant for a while but we have recently entered an era where the relations are developing quite expeditiously and our relations are growing on the basis of mutual uh, interests and benefits. It's very important to mention also that in order for peace to reign in the Middle East, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict should be brought to an eventual solution. We will continue to support the Palestinian people and their and state in their struggle for their legitimate rights under international law. If I need to repeat once again, Without the realization of an independent and geographically integrated Palestinian state based on the 1967 borders, it is difficult for Israel to find the peace and security it seeks in that part of the world. In this context, we will continue to pursue respect for the historic status of Jerusalem, in particular We have strong political 
economic and humanitarian ties with the Balkans going back in history. And we are working hard on bilateral, regional and international platforms to ensure stability in this critical region of Europe and to resolve the disputes through dialogue. We actively support the processes excuse me, we actively support the process for the normalization of relations between Kosovo and Serbia, which have been strained recently. The increasingly complex nature of regional and global challenges points to the need for Turkey and European Union relations to move forward on a healthy basis more than ever before. We expect the European Union to quickly start fulfilling its long-neglected obligations towards our country. Especially the ambiguous attitudes against Turkey should be stopped once and for all. Latin, Amer Latin America and the Caribbean is another region where we are mobilizing all elements of our humanitarian foreign policy and where our ties of friendship are getting stronger day by day. In the forthcoming period, we aim to transform these relations into a Turkey, Latin America and the Caribbean partnership policy. On the 60th anniversary of its establishment, the African Union is a monumental symbol of the continent taking its destiny into its own hands and standing up. The process that started with the will to find African solutions to African problems has turned into one of the most important developmental projects in the world. To accompany Africa on this path, we have crowned our ties of friendship with the continent with a strategic partnership. However, I must once again reiterate that we have welcomed the G20 membership of African Union, which we attach great significance to as well. It's a fact that the Sahel region faces serious political, economic, social and security challenges. We hope that Niger, which has been experiencing troubled times recently, will regain constitutional order and democratic governance as soon as possible. Any military intervention in Niger risks plunging, in this, plunging this country and the entire region into deeper instability. Our Asia Anew initiative has become a symbol of our will to further advance our relations with Asia, our ancestral homeland, on the basis of mutual benefit and common priorities. We have a historic opportunity to build peace, tranquility, cooperation in the South Caucasus. To seize this opportunity fully, we have launched a process with Armenia aiming at good neighborly relations and a full normalization. In the same spirit, we have supported the negotiations between Azerbaijan and Armenia from the very beginning. However, Armenia is not taking the utmost opportunity of this historical uh, chance. We expect a comprehensive peace agreement to be signed between the two countries as soon as possible and promises to be quickly fulfilled, especially the opening of the Zangezur Corridor. And Karabakh is the territory of Azerbaijan. Any other status imposed will never be accepted. Everybody has the right to coexist on the Azerbaijani soil, including the Armenians, and that should be our primary goal. There will be one, uh, we are moving together with Azerbaijan under the slogan, under the motto that we are two nations, one state. 
And the the efforts for the strengthening of our cooperation with the countries of the Central Asia, where the roots of our ancient civilization lie and where we share the same culture are currently underway. We are pleased that the organization of Turkic states is becoming an increasingly effective regional and global actor. The Afghani people, who have been going through difficult times for half a century, are in dire need of humanitarian assistance and support, regardless of political motives. The transport transformation of the interim government into an inclusive administration in which all segments of society are fairly represented will pave the way for Afghanistan and will be positively received in the international arena. Another development that will pave the way for regional peace, stability and prosperity in South Asia will be the establishment of a just and lasting peace in Kashmir through dialogue and cooperation between India and Pakistan. As Turkey, we will continue to support the steps to be taken in this direction. We emphasize at every opportunity that we respect China's territorial integrity and uh, sovereignty. However, we will continue to express our sensitivity regarding the protection of the fundamental rights and freedoms of Uyghur Turks, with whom we have strong historical and humanitarian ties. We are a country that has extended a helping hand to Rohingya Muslims living in difficult conditions in Myanmar and Bangladesh since the first day. Our support for the displaced Rohingyas will continue until their safe, voluntary, dignified and permanent return to their homeland is ensured. Dear delegates, Our goal of continuously improving relations with our neighbors as well as with our friends in more distant geographies is essential manifestation of our quest to respond more effectively to global challenges. And energy supply security is an important issue in the global agenda and we have carried out significant investments in the last two decades in order to uh, depend on our own means. Energy will no longer, should no longer be used as an instrument of hostility, but energy should be a vessel for solidarity and cooperation. So within this framework, from the Black Sea to the Balkans, from the uh, Caucasia to uh, many different parts of the world, we have uh, always prioritized cooperation and solidarity. And we are striving to do more. And in the field of transportation, Turkey has the geopolitical position to support all projects that will pass through or around it. Technological innovations should be seen as an opportunity to solve global and regional challenges, not as a trump card to increase competitiveness. Unfortunately, we are gradually moving away from the slogan Zero Hunger by 2030, which is among the most important titles of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. In fact, we find it difficult to accept hunger as an issue, as an unsolved problem here in the 21st century. We call on all countries to show strong will to realize the sustainable developmental goals, especially in this region where wealth has skyrocketed. And we cannot explain why 735 million inhabitants of the world still live in dire poverty. Hundreds of millions of dollars are being spent in order to reach space, but from Africa to uh, Asia, millions of people cannot even find a decent, decent portion of food to consume. So long as that is the situation, none of us can be safe. So, as I've said before, all countries should demonstrate a strong will in order to realize sustainable development goals. 
We are one of the most generous countries of the world in terms of sustain, uh, de development aid, and we have the right to launch this appeal. The global climate change is another issue that I'd like to touch upon. It's becoming increasingly difficult to limit the global temperature rise due to climate change to 1.5 degrees Celsius. One of the conditions for this is financial and technological support for the efforts of developing countries that is needed. Food security is one of the main areas affected by climate change. We must develop and implement the right policies and investments for the sustainable use of water and land resources. We cannot bequeath to our children a world plagued by pollution caused by unconscious, unconscientious consumption and depleted natural resources. With this understanding, we have taken the zero waste movement, which we started in our country with the vision of a more livable and fairer world, to a global dimension with the decision adopted at the United Nations with the joint representation of 105 countries, along with my spouse, the First Lady. Yesterday, we have signed the Goodwill uh, Declaration on Zero Waste at the Turkish Mission yesterday evening. We hope that our zero waste targets will contribute to combating climate change and achieving sustainable development goals. So I would like to kindly invite all the countries, the international organizations and the NGOs to support the zero waste movement globally, especially the developed countries are suffering from racism as if it were a plague, along with xenophobia, Islamophobia, and it's become unbearable and it has reached intolerable levels. Hate speech, polarization and discrimination against innocent people leave no conscience untouched around the world. Unfortunately, Populist politicians in many countries continue to play with fire by encouraging such dangerous trends. The mentality that encourages the heinous attacks against the Holy Quran in Europe by allowing them under the guise of freedom of expression is essentially darkening its own future with its own hands. As Turkey we will continue to support initiatives to combat Islamophobia on all platforms, including the United Nations, OSCE, and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Regardless of which faith they might follow, nobody can accept heinous attacks against sacred elements. And I would kindly ask all the brotherly nations to support and follow these developments around the world. Combating all these challenges, each of which I have tried to touch upon in a few sentences, is our common responsibility. And we can fulfill this responsibility only through effective cooperation and solidarity. Quite recently, we believe that the ancient values that make humans what they are are being eroded. These attacks are threatening prosperity and welfare of entire world. And we have family at the core of our endeavors that we need to protect and that we need to save. So saving families will mean saving the future of the entire human race. The uh, global impositions are on the rise in an unprecedented fashion. That's why I would kindly ask all of the member states to support the family institution and protect the family institution. As the Republic of Turkey, which celebrates its 100th anniversary this year, we will continue to take steps towards peace, prosperity and security for all, for the benefit of the entire human race. I hope that the work of the 78th session of the United Nations General Assembly will strengthen the spirit of global cooperation and solidarity. And on this occasion, 
I will also take a moment to mention that the recent uh, negativities happening between Armenia and Azerbaijan need to be condemned and the regional developments need to be brought to a solution immediately. That's what I hope and pray for. I would like to greet you all once again with love and respect, and may you remain in health. Thank you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Turkey for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.